Cause I'm the data guy, making bytes fly high, diving deep into the data, reaching for the sky, from ETLs to data lakes and pipelines that don't break. Tune in, hang on, and let's make data great. Hey y'all, data guy here. So today, I'm kind of taking it a step back from the airflow specific topics to get a little more general and help to educate the audience on what really is the data pipeline. Um, and so this is, you know, more for people that are newer to the ETL and data engineering space um, and just want to understand, hey, what are the different components of a data pipeline? What are some of the tools used to build these? What are the components of them? So it's a great video, you know, if you're just starting your data engineering journey um, or you're just interested in the world of data. Um, so to kind of start off and to illustrate, you know, what a data pipeline is, um, it's a set of processes that's going to move data from one system to another doing some kind of transformations or enrichments along the way. Um, and you can think of that almost like an assembly line for data. So, you know, you get your data, you know, you're the factory work on the assembly line, you're going to transform it, you're going to massage it, build it into something new. Um, then you're going to pass it off to another worker who's then going to, you know, box it, and then it's going to send it out um, to, you know, your customer, right? So you're, you're processing data um, in a structured way. So then, you know, every day you're just performing that same process. Um, bring that data in, uh, performing those same transformations, packaging it, and then sending it on its way. Um, and so that's what I kind of wanted to illustrate here with this graphic um, is typically, you know, you'll have some kind of source tables, maybe there, you know, you're collecting some customer information from Salesforce, you're collecting information on your sales from Shopify, um, maybe you're just querying some uh, game usage information from an Amazon storage location. Um, so you're going to take that data, and this is kind of just the overall structure of pretty much every data pipeline. It's just three steps. You tab your source, and then you're going to take that data from your source. You're going to run some process on it, some kind of transformation um, to make that data either more readable, take out a data you don't need, um, and just prepare it for its destination, where you're going to you know, either save it in a large database that holds all your data, uh, maybe you're going to use it to make some visualizations in an analytics dashboard. Uh, maybe you're using it to run some machine learning models. Um, it can be anything. Um, and so the data pipeline encompasses three C steps. It takes data from the source, does some processing on that data before dropping that data in a destination. Um, and so now what I'll kind of do is just break down each of these three components. What are the different uh, sources you, you might use? What are the different processes you might use? What are the different destinations um, you might have? And then we'll kind of talk about different use cases and you know why, the importance of why data pipelines are so useful. So here you have kind of a graphic on the modern data ecosystem. Um, so here I were, you know, it's kind of just a lot, a lot of different tools. Um, you know, some people will probably fight me because I've definitely left out their favorite tools. Um, and this isn't meant to be a comprehensive roundup of all the different pieces within uh, a data ecosystem, but rather just an idea of, hey, there are all these different sources that you might be using to pull data out of. And so typically what you'll be using as your data sources, um, and so kind of just taking out all that clutter and showing you, hey, what are some of the actual like sources of that data um, in the more practical sense? You have four kind of main sources um, of data you'll use in your data pipeline. Um, you'll have applications and APIs. So applications maybe you're using to power your business, um, applications that you're using to collect information from customers, um, really whatever. Um, and then you'll be querying those um, and bringing data in from those, you know, maybe to process customer data, to collect information um, about, you know, maybe the news from a news API, let's say. Um, you'll also have databases. Um, so maybe your databases, you know, obviously they're exactly what they sound like. They're maybe storing data that you're collecting on whatever um, process, or you're taking, maybe you're migrating some data from an existing data storage and you want to transform it and, you know, clean it up before saving it in your permanent database storage. Um, you also have files. Um, a lot of businesses, a lot of people still, you know, collect data from Excel files. Some people will laugh at that. Um, or, you know, maybe you have all your managers submit a file detailing their report expenses for the week. Um, that can be a really valuable source of information and, uh, for data pipeline, really great use case, honestly, because, you know, if you don't have pi data pipeline doing it, maybe someone has to manually, you know, read in all those files and figure out what's going on and join them together and do all that funny business. Um, you also have events. So this could be things like, 
um, you know, a customer's had a failure in their in their uh, fridge. Maybe you're a fridge manufacturer and you have IoT devices. And whenever an IoT device fails, you have an event stream that triggers a data pipeline to process that information about the event and then create a support ticket that notifies someone with the information about what went wrong um, with that refrigerator so you can fix it uh, promptly. And then there's a bunch of different tools you can use to kind of ingest this data um, in a structured way. Um, so you don't actually have to build out like a Python script yourself. Some of them have like drag and drop tools where you can say, hey, I want these four fields and I want to run on this schedule and you don't even need to use code to actually ingest them. Um, and that's that's what I kind of want to show you today is, you know, hey, it doesn't have to be this big scary thing to write data pipelines. They're really easy to implement and they just save a ton of time for people. So the next stage, data processing, um, is where your data is actually clean, transformed. This is kind of the, the action part of your data pipeline. So this is, you know, operations that maybe a human might have had to perform in the past where they're manually every day, you know, I got to clean the support, I got to strip some columns, I got to put it in a readable format and then bring it to my boss. A lot of times you can build a data pipeline to completely replace that operation. So you just have the data pipeline that runs every week and then you get all that time back. Um, and so a typical data processing workflow, um, and I just found this really simple example to show y'all, um, is you have something like, hey, I have some input data, just raw um, numbers, I have dates, um, and then my data processing workflow, <laughs> I just noticed it says, e, uh, only has one S, please disregard. Um, it's going to then arrange that data, it's gonna sort it, it's gonna combine it, it's gonna maybe perform some mathematical operations. Um, and this is where you would write, you know, some kind of custom script, or you know, use a GUI tool to f define what these transformations are going to be, and then those will happen on a regular basis. So every time the data pipeline is run, you know, new data is ingested. It has those processes run on it, and then it's brought into this standardized output. So now, you know, every week when I pull in this raw temperature and date information, it will create this you know beautiful little graphic that shows me hey what the temperature per date was, um, and then I don't have to do that. It just processes that information, gives me human readable information on a regular basis scheduled um, with, you know, out you needing to do anything really. And so then your final step of your data pipeline. So after your data processing has happened, you're going to store that data in some kind of database. Um, and so this is just kind of a graphic that's just showing, hey, all the different databases providers that are out there, you have the Snowflake database. So I'm craning my head so you can see that's a big one. Um, you know, a lot of legacy companies use Oracle, no shade. I used to work there. Um, and then you also have, you know, have Redshift, SQL databases, MySQL, billions and billions of different database providers. There's new database providers on the market every single day because everyone wants to provide you the best possible database. Um, and so this is just really where after data is transformed, you're just storing your data. So this is less exciting portion. It's just, you know, hey, this is where your data is storing, but it can also sometimes be the most complex, you know, how to define and store your data in a easily accessible and human readable way. Um, and so after your data is stored, the next step of some data pipelines, so this wasn't on that little graphic I showed earlier, is using that data for data analysis and making business decisions. And the reason it's not on the graphic earlier is because this is the step that's really going to depend on your use case. Um, you know, you're not going to use data analytics for every single step. And so this is where, you know, those dashboards are coming into play. You have a ton of different providers again. Um, so, you know, R, that's the big old school, you know, data analytics where you can write it kind of as code um, and generate visualizations that way. You can do it via Python. There's a bunch of different libraries. Uh, you know, there's micro strategies, there's analytics cloud, there's big, there's so many different analytics providers. Um, it's really just up to you uh, where you're gonna, which ones you're gonna use and which ones are most compatible with your needs. Um, and so that's kind of the final step and that can be replaced by maybe, you know, instead of putting an analytics here, you're ingesting it back into another application that's gonna use that data. Um, so. A lot of different ways, you know, you can extend your data pipelines kind of past this initial, um, you know, three-step, just simple, you know, input processing uh, transformation. And so there are a lot of different benefits to data pipelines. Um, and so what I want to do is kind of just go over some main ones and why, you know, they can mean a lot to you regardless of your, you know, business type. They're really just universally applicable. Um, and the first one is efficiency and just saving you time and effort um, on a daily basis. So, you know, imagine any of those processes I just described, imagine you have to manually, you know, do that transfer, transform gigabytes of data, uh, you know, manage those uploads, monitor them manually. Uh, it's just, it's not fun. It's not a good time. You're going to want to quit your job within like a month. Um, and so what data pipelines do is allow you to take these tasks that you would otherwise have to do manually 
and automate them. Um, and that you know not only saves you time, but it also will save you a lot of errors. Um, you know, if you're having to do the same process every day manually, humans are never perfect, and you're going to slip up eventually. Um, and you know, there's not really like a record, an audit log of, hey, what did you do differently this time that caused this error? You have to go back and figure that out yourself. Um, and it's, just, it's incredibly difficult. Um, and so what data pipelines not only you know, automate and make these tasks easier, but they reduce the errors and the time to spend troubleshooting, which is the worst time ever um, in any job is troubleshooting and figuring out what went wrong. Um, additionally, scalability. So as your data grows, um, or you can scale your data pipelines very easily to accommodate you know, more data sources and larger volumes. Um, and this is where you know, use tools like Airflow that can dynamically add um, you know, workers and compute power um, to actually allow you to manage that growth in your data um, so you don't have to, <laughs> you know, you're not just stuck having, again, you know, having to constantly rebuild and re-architect to figure out, okay, well, now we're taking in double the data. So how are we going to figure out how to manage all this? With data pipelines, if you have those structured processes, it can be as simple as just copying and pasting and saying, hey, you know, just use this data pipeline for a new data source. Um, so it's almost infinitely scalable. Um, and then it also means real-time analysis. And not only that, and you know, because it's more efficient, it's able to process data faster. It's able to give your business and stakeholders better information faster um, and closer to real time so that they can make decisions on the most recent, most accurate data, rather than maybe, you know, working from data that's, you know, months or, or years old, or sorry, not years, days or weeks old. Um, so just making sure that, hey, your data is always of highest quality, always accurate, uh, and reducing the burden on you to actually provide that, um, where you, know, you don't really have to need to worry about it. Your data pipelines are taking care of that, and you can just worry about building more data pipelines to start growing your business and growing the amount of data you're processing, rather than just keeping up with the existing amount of data and you know kind of treading water there. Um, and so, so now that you kind of got an idea of, hey, what is a data pipeline? What are some of the benefits of it? I also want to talk about, hey, what are the different types of data pipelines, and what are some of the tools you might use to actually build them? Um, so you know, hey, how do I get started with these? Um, and so first thing I want to talk about, obviously, is different types. And so there's really two main types. And then obviously, the third is just like a hybrid combination of the two. But the first type is real-time data processing. Um, and so with real-time data processing, what you're doing is as soon as data is ingested, so maybe it's on either you know using a live streaming service like Apache Spark, or every five minutes you're querying some API endpoints, that data is then captured, you run your transformations, you're processing on it, then you save it in a database and serve analytics to someone. And so you'll normally wanna do this for something like analytics workload be so that your end users, they have the most accurate data, they're not working from out of data information um, and just gives them the best possible user experience. Now, if you don't wanna do real-time analytics because this, this can be expensive. You're running data pipelines constantly, um, constantly having to update, constantly have to transform. Um, so what some people do is they prefer the batch processing approach. And so with batch processing, what you'll do is you'll actually aggregate data from sources. So maybe many different API calls um, where you're going to collect data over a longer period. So instead of you know every five minutes or on a you know 30 second basis or live streaming, you'll say, hey, every you know once once a day, once a week, I want to collect all the data that's been uh, created in the past week. So then what it does is it takes all of that um, data that's been collected over the past week, batch processes it. So it doesn't process it until that day, you know, until it's been a week since the last batch process. Then it takes that data from the past week, processes it, and then serves it, you know, to your business intelligence, into your end database, whatever. Um, and so that's how batch processing um, can work. And so you can also set up a flow where, hey, the batch processing will occur when you want to query the data. So it'll wait for, you know, when a user needs the data and then run that batch process. Um, and so the third type that is in here is, is hybrid where you use both these combined um, where, you know, maybe I'm doing real-time analytics when someone's querying um, or I'm real-time batching. Uh, I, I don't really know, honestly. I haven't seen much real a hybrid, but you can do it. Um, and so now that you have, you know, what batch processing pipeline is, or in a real-time pipeline is, uh, what are the tools you're gonna use to build it? And so here you kind of have, uh, what are the different, uh, just a graphic of all the different tools out there that you can use to build your data pipelines. Um, so 
while you're using all those different systems for actually, you know, doing your transformations, for ingesting data, for storing it, you also need systems that will manage and actually run these data pipelines for you. And that's why, you know, we're the Airflow channel. We love Airflow. Uh, I'm the data guy and I love Airflow. So Airflow, I'm always going to plug, is an amazing tool. It can be extended for almost any data pipeline use case. So that's the one I would highly recommend using. But there are a ton of different providers out there, all with their own kind of little, you know, unique benefits for particular use cases. So if you don't want to use Airflow, I think you're wrong. <laughs> but uh, you, you can use other tools to, to actually build your data pipelines. Um, and so that's that's really all I had to show you today. Um, so that is the end of my presentation. I hope that you found some value in this and understanding what a data pipeline is, some of the value that it can bring as kind of the circulatory system for data in your business, making sure all your data is getting in the right place, right time, and the right format. Um, if you don't, if you found this video helpful, if you liked it, please hit that like and subscribe button uh, for more videos. And if you have a topic you'd like to cover me to cover in the future let me know um, and I will cover it for you. Um, so with that further ado, data guy out.